set up the or when I signed up for this talk, I uh, had no idea what was going to happen on Black Friday. So uh, thankfully, this uh, this talk is a bit more uh, um, positive than it could have otherwise been. Uh, this very much could have been a disaster porn segment, but that's uh, not the way it uh, went, thankfully. Um, so this is the second year that we've done a uh, Node BF sort of uh, um, Twitter campaign. Uh, and uh, basically we just documented what, uh, what happened in our system as uh, we hit the uh, most traffic that we see throughout the year. And um, this year was uh, fairly unique for myself because uh, it was the first year that we were uh, doing some fairly intensive CPU tasks within our node environment. Uh, last year we were basically just concatenating some uh, JavaScript, or sorry, concatenating HTML with a little bit of minimal JavaScript and pushing out to the client. That lightweight, super simple, easy. Uh, this year, uh, to try to improve our initial page load performance as well as our SEO, we've updated a number of our pages to render the content on the server and then push it down to the client. Uh, so it, this provides a much faster page load. Um, I can show you some nice side-by-side uh, -side videos that uh, really drive home the point, but I don't really have time for that today or in this presentation. Uh, the, the issue that this brings up is that it's a massively different uh, uh, load on the servers. It's CPU versus I.O. bound, and Node is awesome at, uh, at I.O. weight sorts of uh, tasks, but uh, CPU bound operations using having only one thread available um, can quickly spiral, spiral out of control if you don't have uh, the proper configuration and uh, safety mechanisms. So this is kind of what uh, I had uh, thought that Black Friday would be, and it, it certainly was in the uh, the couple of months prior to Black Friday. Uh, but uh, we actually effectively repeated last year. Uh, this is a graph of our, uh, um, I believe this is the RSS loads on the servers, and they're basically flat. There's the servers were at least on this particular metric uh, not doing a whole lot. Um, this is obviously a bit contrived because the CPUs were doing a lot of things as well, but those graphs aren't uh, nearly as interesting and don't drive the point home. Um, but to do all of this, it took uh, a lot of work to uh, to get our system into the state that we needed it to be. Uh, when we first started deploying this. Uh, Everything seemed fine under our smaller production loads, but we quickly found that, uh, um, like on our first stress test, we couldn't even deliver half of the traffic that we did last year um, due to these changes and due to implementing them in some pathological ways, uh, which was not good. Uh, needless to say, there were some um, concerned people in the business group uh, after those results. Um, but uh, basically, we, we use those stress tests as well as uh, um, some pretty aggressive monitoring, uh, both during those tests and throughout the year, uh, to identify issues that we may have run into between memory leaks, uh, excessive CPU, and those sorts of things. And we fix them, fixed them as quickly as we could and pushed to production and uh, moved on to the next issue, uh, which this was very helpful. Uh, we survived. Uh, so I, there's uh, three big changes that we made that uh, helped us out the most, in, in our opinion. Uh, the first of those was the uh, event loop. Uh, effectively, we were taking a system that was designed to generate HTML on a, within a browser on the uh, user's device and uh, trying to make it work under a node environment that has very different goals. On the user's device, you may want to show partial behavior earlier, or you may want to delay the actual, you, you may want to run on the event loop longer uh, in order to uh, show everything at the proper time to the user, and in some cases, avoid browser bugs. Uh, but this led to situations where you'd have 
40 milliseconds to render a page, and that's continuous. Uh, so rendering a single page would be 40 milliseconds sitting on the event loop, and under under small loads, that's not an issue. But when you start throwing a ton of crazed shoppers at the system, uh, it, it very quickly um, destabilizes the system. And when you're in a situation that you have uh, uh, event loop contention on your node server, it, you can take down the entire thing very easily. It's not just that only those routes are uh, destabilized, it's everything. So that ties, that's basically the behavior that we saw in our first stress test. Uh, the, uh, the entire server went down, not just the, uh, the pages that uh, were in question here, and that's very bad. Uh, so, additionally, uh, we, we, since we had the client-side rendering uh, path that we had used previous years and we knew that that worked, uh, we were able to utilize this to uh, uh, fail over at the, uh, at the proper, or fail over if the system determined that it was uh, likely to hit a, a case where there would be contention or uh, just general stress. Um, we also designed this so that it would be automatic. Um, the, the point that you're starting to have, or at the point that a human could react to having been notified by a system that uh, email or pager or whatever the case may be, your system's already highly unstable at that point. And uh, you may even, depending on exactly how it's implemented, if it's a live config push, uh, you may not be able to even talk to the endpoints in question. Um, and restarting servers that are already under that sort of load can also lead to some very bad things. Uh, so uh, you absolutely want to make sure that if you are doing any sort of failover, it happens automatically. Uh, we also designed the system so that it was uh, targeted at the public use case, at the Googlebot, at the uh, um, basically at the point that we can serve only the content to the user that, uh, or sorry, that the initial response is only the content that is long lived and applies to everyone. Uh, so we split out services that would either user specific or have uh, data that uh, uh, needs to be shorter lived uh, due, due to whatever reason. And then we pushed all of this into a large number of caches uh, throughout the system. and. Uh, found that uh, it, your use case will vary, but uh, they're, they're having offload in a system like this is quite important. So we did all of these, but there was certainly a varied amount of impact based off of uh, what the, uh, uh, based off of each different action that we took. Uh, so the event loop was very important. So was the event loop and the event loop. Uh, this change added a lot of complexity to our, to our code because we needed to support rendering synchronously on the client and asynchronously on the server. But it, had we not made these changes, I don't think that we would have survived the holiday. Um, or we would have had to uh, uh, turn things off and toned it down, gone back to the older system or other sorts of mitigation techniques. Uh, but the failover and the caching actually didn't matter that much for us. Um, of course, that did not work on this resolution. Uh, so this is a graph of all the server-side uh, um, execution instances of over, uh, I believe, uh, the dates are there. Um, we found that uh, almost no failover occurred. There were some errors down at the bottom, maybe 2% at the peak, I'm not sure. Uh, you can't even see the instances on this graph of the, uh, of the uh, failover, or the load-based failover cases. Um, they were there in the raw data, but uh, uh, in, at this scale, it just it, it didn't really matter. Uh, whether or not those triggers were false positives or whether or not they, had they not happened, the system would have then become unstable is unclear.
but at the volume that they did occur, it's, it seems like that did not help us as much uh, under our particular load there. Which kind of ties me in. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, this kind of ties me into uh, the point that uh, everyone should be aware on this. There, there's some here be dragons to just assuming that uh, the things that we did for our use case will work for your system if you're uh, consulting similar things. But uh, it's certainly helpful to know that this is the case, uh, but you absolutely have to do your own testing to make sure that uh, whatever your, your traffic patterns, whatever your Black Friday is, your Super Bowl, uh, you can survive those sorts of situations. Um, so I'll, I'll post these slides later. Um, uh, some links to the, uh, the system that we used, as well as uh, the write-up that I did on the start of our Node BF event. But uh, thank you very much.